I will uh, call to meet to order the um, July meeting of the Bloomington Board of Park Commissioners. And Kim, could you start us with the roll call, please? Kathleen Mills. Here. Ellen Rodkey. Here. Israel Herrera. Here. Jim Whitlatch. Here. Okay, we do have all of our members. Um, we have three in person, and we have Jim there remotely. So, uh, first up, consent calendar. So, again, just returning things um, Banneker Center, pest control, cleaning services, uh, drool in the pool, agreement with Mad for My Dog, and Bruce Wild Security contract for the Griffey Deer Hunt. So, do we have a motion to approve? Excuse me, I'll move to approve the consent calendar. Okay, and a roll call vote of all those in favor? Kathleen Mills. Aye. Ellen Rodkey. Aye. Israel Herrera. Aye. Jim Whitlatch. Aye. Okay, motion is unanimously carried. And then in our section B, public hearings and appearances, first up, Emily Book will tell us about the Bravo Award. These are our two scouts, is yes. that, okay. All right, um, good afternoon everyone. Emily Book, Community Relations Coordinator, and I would like to rec recommend Colton Teeters and Neil Jacobson for the July Bravo Award. Uh, Colton and Neil are two Boy Scouts with BSA Troop 100 that chose to complete their Eagle Scout projects at Crestmont Park. Um, boys, both boys worked with Steve Cotter, um, John Luke, and the trail staff to help build staircases, as you can see in the presentation there, uh, into the large hill at Crestmont Park. The gravel and wood construction, it respects the natural environment of the park while also making it more easily traversable for both users and disc golf players. Um, they're very well constructed and I'm sure they're going to be of much use to people who uh, use Crestmont Park. As someone who has disc golfed there and almost blown their knee out going down that hill, I definitely appreciate stairs, makes it a lot easier. Um, Colton wasn't able to make it today, he's out of state, but Neil and his mom are here. Um, you know, do you wanna say anything? You don't have to. No, he's all good, he's all good. Um, but no, we, it, the, the stairs look great. Um, so I know Steve really appreciates it, we really appreciate it. Uh, it took a lot of time and effort, so we really thank the boys for, for all their hard work on these steps. Thank you. Thank you, Neil, and thank you, Colton, wherever you are. Those are, that looks really nice. How long did it take to construct? about uh, 200 hours. Wow. wow. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So they look, the five, I've seen, I haven't been out in person yet, but I've seen the pictures. They look great. They're, yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. Very much appreciated. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, and then in B2, we will have a staff introduction, Natalia Dickerson. Good afternoon. My name is Natalia Dickerson, and I am a natural resources intern. I am a fourth year undergraduate student at Indiana University, jointly pursuing a degree through the College of Arts and Sciences in the School of Public Environmental Affairs for a Bachelor's of Science in Environmental Science. During my undergraduate experience so far, I've worked to increase awareness of environmental issues through my wellness chair position at the Black Student Union. Through this, I aim to educate peers on how climate change and waste pollution would disproportionately affect minority and lower income populations. I'm currently working on a food waste reduction program at, for school lunches at Fairview Elementary School where I work as a teaching assistant during the school year. I am passionate about solid waste management and its relation to the well-being of not only humans but all animal and plant life on earth. I hope to protect and preserve the beauty and utility of our environment and I'm eager to begin my career path pursuing this goal as a natural resources intern. I look forward to supporting environmental education programs, developing a zero waste policy for the department, and assisting with trail maintenance. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Good. Sounds like you have a lot of great experience to bring. So, yeah. All right, so that's Natalia. And then in B3, um, Darren will present the Park Partner Award to Nature's Way. 
Okay, good afternoon, Darren Eads, Sports Facility Coordinator with the Twin Lakes Rec Center. Uh, you'll be glad to know I'm not here asking for money today or spending money. I'm just here to give away something to a great partner that we have had for many, many years. Unfortunately, it just didn't look like Beth was able to make it today. Uh, so we'll be sure to get the plaque to them. Uh, but Nature's Way has been involved with the rec center since we bought the place back in 2009. Um, they come in and do take care of all the plant life, which is just adds to that facility. Uh, you, you need that greenery. You need just to be able to walk by and smell the plants and everything else. It's just nice to have that. Luckily, we have them coming in and um, I forgot Kim's got me in charge of doing this. There we go. Um, so there, there's a few pictures of the plant life. Luckily, we got them because it was up to me. As I told Julie, and she put it in my staff notes. She said, do you want the staff report? I said, you know me. I'll never follow it anyway. So, um, But, you know, if it was up to me, they'd all be plastic by now, guaranteed, because I'd have them all dead. But uh, I, I think one of the biggest uh, helps with us, honestly, was during COVID when we were closed for three months. And, and Jeremiah and Beth worked with us to get... Um, everything moved in place and walked me through what I needed to do uh, so that they survived COVID. And uh, th these are the same plants we had then. So, but they come through and as they need to be trimmed, they trim, they keep them watered, they keep just total care of them. Um, in, in our part to them for doing what they do is we have plaques hanging up. The one on the left is we have a couple of those plaques in the weight room and cardio studios. Um, and then out on the turf, they have one of the, one of the banners that we well, not a banner, actually, it's a sticker but, that we put on the, on the dashboard for them. But uh, just, just a great partner. Uh, we're so glad that they uh, continue to partner with us on that. And uh, we look forward to many, many more years of continued partnership with them. So we'll be sure to get them their plaque. We'll hold it up so you can see it. And, and uh, a nice little plaque that they can hang up in their, in their office area. So thanks. Great. Thank you, Derek. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nature's Way. All right, um, and then in our section C, other business, um, you're not Mark. I'm not Mark. <laughs> uh, the contract with Odin and Ollie's for Lower Cascades Playground Painting. Yes, hello, Rebecca Swift, the Operations and Development Director. I'm here on behalf of Mark Moratz to present the service agreement with Odin and Ollie's Painting to paint Lower Cascades Playground. Um, the amount is not to exceed $8,800, and throughout the years, just the wooden posts and the decking and platforms at Lower Cascade Playgrounds have worn down and need some routine maintenance. Um, we do not plan to close down the playground until school is back in session to hopefully reduce the amount of um, impact to park users. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions for Rebecca? All right, yeah. Okay. Uh, make a motion to approve the contract with Odin and Ollie's for Lower Cascades Playground Painting. Second. All right, and a roll call vote, please. Kathleen Mills. Aye. Ellen Rodkey. Aye. Israel Herrera. Aye. Jim Whitlatch. Aye. All right, motion carried. Thank, Thank you, you, Rebecca. Thank you. All right, and then um, in C2, we have an update to policy 11080, behavior guidelines, and policy 2140, dress code. Leslie Brinson. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Leslie Brinson, Recreation Services General Manager, here to get approval of a couple of policy updates. I understand we're going to do them um, one approval at a time. So I'll, the first one we're going to update is the policy 2140 um, for the dress code. This policy has been updated to include language concerning full-time staff and now includes more specific expectations for staff working both in the office and in the field. The language concerning business casual attire and more detail on what it, that is and what is not acceptable at work has also been included. As a reminder, the Parks Department has a policy manual that is updated periodically as we review and as things change, and this is just one of those tidying up and cleaning up the uniform policy. So this is not a result of anything that came up? This is just? No, we were looking at, um, so professional wear, so things that are embroidered that you wear in the office, we have a specific catalog of things you can order. And as we're starting to update that part and you know decide what needs to be on it and what vendor we're going to use, it kind of made sense to let's just pull out the uniform policy at the same time and make sure it is what we want it to say. And it was a little bit more geared towards seasonal staff, and we wanted to make sure it included um, full-time staff as well. Um, so that's the first one. Um, any questions about 
So what's the new language that uh, is mentioned? Is deleted number six? Is that the is that the first one? Eleven zero eight. No, this is um, policy 2140 we're talking about right now. And I don't have the policy in front of me, but there really weren't any major changes. Again, it was just tidying up some of the language, being a little more specific at what business casual means, a little more specific about when you're working in the field, you should be dressed appropriately for field work, closed-toed shoes, whatever you need. But when you're in the office, a little bit more business casual attire. And so just um, some language that specifies that. Mm -hmm. so, so the only change would be more language about. Yeah, I mean, we aren't changing what people are doing. People have been following basically what we have in the policy. It's just writing it a little more clearly. So um, it's just. Okay. Any questions from Jim? Doesn't look like it. No yeah. questions. Okay. Do we have a motion yeah. then? I'll make a motion to approve the update to policy 2140 dress code. Second. Okay. And a roll call vote, please. Aye. Ellen Rodkey. Aye. Israel Herrera. Aye. Jim Whitlatch. Aye. Okay. That motion's carried and then uh, 11080 behavior guidelines. Yes, yes, so this policy is actually updated quite frequently as we go through processes, but this policy has been updated to exclude number six in the behavior policy manual under the rules and conduct section. After recent park activities and discussion with our legal department, it was determined that the, this rule should no longer be included in the policy, and so we have just removed it. Okay. Um, I guess this, I'm not really um, asking about anything that's changed here. I just noticed in the dropped off children section that it says no child under the age of seven should be admitted to facilities without adult attendance. It says age 10 for pools, but I think it says something older than that. Yeah, I think pools. it actually is 14 if you're with an adult. So I'll take a look at that part okay. of the policy. Sure. Okay, great. Thanks. Yep. Um, right. Jim, do you have another? Oh. Yeah. I, I have some I have some questions or comments if if that's okay, and and I guess my overall comment is that this is a pretty important policy for us, and I know we've looked at it before, and I appreciate all the work that staff has done on it. Um, I wonder if it's time, or I I am suggesting that it may be time for. Uh, us to go through this from sort of from beginning to end and uh, review it. Uh, and I don't know how best to do that. Uh, I'd be happy to be involved in that as a, with a staff as a single uh, board member to give you my input. I mean, I have some input that I don't know that we want to try to amend this today, but you know, some things like in the second paragraph, uh, it seems to me that instead of saying includes vulgar language, verbal abuse, and other things, uh, we should say includes but not limited to and add criminal behavior and things like that. Uh, we have had a discussion. I know there's we're doing more because in the second part it says the copy of these regulations are available upon request. I know we've started doing things with um, uh, ability to uh, click on an OCR code or something like that to be able to see these at different locations and maybe include them in that. Um, I wonder under uh, the part uh, at the top of page two where it talks about locations where animals need to be dealt with differently if we should include at least portions of Switchyard Park in that, uh, seems to me. Uh, I don't really have an objection with Section 6 regarding removing that. I do want, I do have some concern under that section and I don't have a solution to it, but I get a little nervous about videotaping uh, in locations like 
the pool area and things like that to give me a little pause that we may want to think about. But again, I don't have any specific concern about that uh, that I can address now. I do wonder in seven about, as we already mentioned about the age of seven for uh, dropping uh, children off. Uh, and that one says, seven says in department facilities, it doesn't really talk about, uh, or it's not clear that that also applies to other parks other than in facilities. Uh, number eight, we probably have, ought to have legal look at to determine whether uh, there are other additions that should be included in the anti-harassment. One that I'm thinking of would be gender identity uh, that is not included there. Uh, there is provisions regarding the use of rollerblades inside department facilities, but it seems to me we may have restrictions of those some places outside of park facilities. Um, and I do have uh, issues. I, I don't have issues. I just think we ought to look at our disruptive behavior policy and those types of things as we move forward. Um, I do note again at the end of it under conduct, conduct response policy where we talk about appeals to the parks commissioners, but it also gives us the option of having that go to an advisory council. I don't know what that means. And I guess if we're going to, that there may be times where we may want to send it to an advisory council, but who is the advisory council? Um, so I think we'd want to consider that. Um, Those advisory and, councils be, would be the ones already in place. So like the Farmers Market Advisory Council, the Golf Course Advisory Council, ERAC Advisory Councils. It wouldn't be like a, it's not referring to like a, not made up, but a created council. Yeah. It would be one of our existing councils for that particular piece. And we may want to make that clear. And then on the, the last one that I have, uh, just kind of as a quick look at this is on the protocol for violation of tobacco use policy. Uh, I don't think that deals with the issue of vaping, uh, nor uh, chewing uh, uh, non smoking tobacco, I, you know, snuff or whatever they call it now or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, I'm, it seems to me that that should be included as well. Uh, but going back to my first statement, and I'm not suggesting that any of these changes be made today, but they're issues that I want to raise. I'm fine with passing the amendment that's been suggested uh, as it is. I just think that because of the importance in today's environment in the parks and other things, I'd like to see us go through this from start to finish. And I guess I would kind of like to be involved in that in some fashion. Uh, working with the uh, a committee of administration uh, and you know since there's four of us there could be one or two of us on the board that could at least be involved in that process and then bring it back to the board for approval but but uh, those are those are my thoughts and uh, comments so uh, that's all I have thanks I would just, yeah, I mean, certainly reviewing the policy is never a bad idea at, w at whatever level that happens. I will say that it's difficult to be all inclusive sometimes in a behavior policy and that some of those that you mention are also referenced or talked about in other policies. And so maybe just clarifying to look at, like, you know, like there is a smoking specific policy. So some of that might just be cross checking and like, um, commenting in this policy that to refer to a, diff a different policy, but certainly however yeah, you want to proceed would be up to Tim. Yeah, I think that's a great point, and that I guess is part of what we should review too. Where is there an overlap or inconsistency in the policies that we should bring in? And I think it's always better to try. I agree, you can't legislate against everything. And you can't address everything in general is oftentimes better than specific. Uh, but I, but I would really like for us to have a single set, the simpler the better, of policy guidelines that we can even post 
uh, have available for people be included in maybe all, many of or most of our publications. And that's not a 15 page document. Ideally, I'd like that to be a one or two page document. Uh, and then also make sure that our policies, I'd like, it seems to me we ought to collect all of those uh, complementary policies together and look at them to make sure they're consistent and see how we can maybe incorporate them into one document. But so I, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, and also just a simpler version that, that is posted. I mean, I know we have things posted in various places, but I just was on a vacation in New York State parks and I couldn't figure out sometimes which parks were okay to take our dogs to. Um, like if there was a swimming area or a lake area or so just something that was really simple like, you know, that listed the, the main rules. So a QR code or whatever would be great. Um, but uh, do we feel comfortable voting on these changes and then possibly with Jim coming back and Re, and a staff member or more revisiting some of these or? I, I've come, from my standpoint, I'm comfortable with approving what we've got here today and then just putting it on the, uh, and then at some point in the future, I mean, I don't think it's an emergent issue by any stretch of the imagination, but over the next several months, maybe we can come up with some kind of way to review these uh, more specifically. Okay. All right. So do we have a motion for the second behavior guidelines? Uh, I will move to approve the update to policy 11080 behavior guidelines. Second. Okay. And a roll call vote, please. Kathleen Bill. Aye. Ellen Rodkey. Aye. Israel Herrera. Aye. Jim Whitlatch. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Thank you, Leslie. Um, and then in C3, Shelby Drake will tell us about the partnership agreement with IU School of Public Health. Hi. Hi. Uh, Shelby, Health and Wellness Coordinator. So today I'm recommending approval of the service agreement between Bloomington Parks and Recreation and the IU School of Public Health. Um, there is no funds exchanged in this service agreement. They are providing a service for us, um, but they are gonna maintain um, all of their like employment benefits with IU, the Parks and Rec Department is not taking on any of that. Basically to break this down pretty simply, we are gonna have a faculty, a staff, and a student be embedded within the Parks and Recreation Office three days a week. They are gonna help me focus on public health um, programs as directed through the Health First Indiana funding, which is federal block grant funding that is being distributed through the county health departments to focus on public health priority public health concerns around like infant mortality, um, childhood obesity, smoking cessation, all of those different things. So they are gonna provide a huge asset to me and just being able to provide funding, research, being able to publish our research. And one of the major reasons we went with the service agreement over a partnership agreement is being able to retain intellectual property. So the city logo and all of our names in terms of um, sending off research and being able to publish research. So we'll be a partner in that instead of them being able to take all of the credit for that. Thank you for so, explaining that. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions for Shelby? No, I uh, think um, this is the, I was it surprised this, this was the first partnership agreement with the School of Public Health and nice yes. to see that. Yeah. We do a lot of indirect stuff. Mm -hmm. Basically, right. I meet with them every day. <laughs> so this will just make it a little bit easier. I don't have to travel to campus um, and find parking, but also we'll just get to do a lot more fun activities. I'm super excited about having Great. them with me all the time. Great. All right, well, I will make a motion to approve the partnership agreement with the IU School of Public Health. Okay. And a roll call vote, please. Kathleen Mills. Aye. Ellen Rodkey. Aye. Israel Herrera. Aye. Jim Whitlatch. Aye. Okay. That motion is carried. Thank you, Shelby. And we don't have anything under our Section D reports today, which brings us to the public comment. I don't know if we have anyone here in person or anyone online who would like to comment. If anyone online would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand. 
hand icon. Okay. All right. Um, and then uh, we will move back over to Tim for any other announcements. It's good afternoon. Tim Street, I'm the Parks Director. Uh, it's nice to have a shorter agenda and to, to be looking at the end of it here before 4.30. Uh, and while I could easily fill the last hour just talking about all the great things that our staff are doing, uh, I will refrain and uh, not take the whole time available. A uh, few things that have gone exceptionally well lately, we had a really great uh, concert at Switchyard Park, actually a couple concerts in Switchyard Park last week um, that were, were well attended and well run. Um, Friday was Park Professionals Day. Uh, and the city administration recognized that with a proclamation and we were able to celebrate um, all the professionals that make up our department and the, the great ways that they can contribute to our community's well-being. Uh, of course, today we are four weeks to the date from our storm during park board. Uh, the last time we were in here and recovery efforts have been uh, intense uh, and ongoing and uh, we continue to work on uh, getting things cleaned up, particularly our urban forestry crews continue to just have a lot of work to do, uh, and our trails crews to get trails reopened, uh, get things back to normal. So that's gonna be a number of weeks still uh, to get all the downed trees and limbs and, and corners of parks and things like that cleaned up and back to normal. Uh, I will make a note that the Small Business Administration uh, is using Frank Southern uh, Ice Arena these coming weeks as a, as a base of operations for some storm recovery efforts in town. Uh, so we have been able to, to partner with them to help uh, recovery come to the community. Uh, shout out to our golf course staff for a great city golf tournament and to our camp staff for almost wrapping up camps. Uh, they have been very busy serving a big portion of the community. And the Banneker Block Party is this Friday at 5.30. Shout out to the pool staff too. Uh, last month we reported on the stay cool Bloomington days. Thankfully the weather has cooled quite a bit from how we started off in June. Uh, we have not had as many stay cool days lately and the rest of the week is looking good. Uh, funding remains in place so we're, we're optimistic that we're going to make it or at least get very close to the end of the season uh, for any potential other heat risk days. And of course the pools do close uh, during the week once school begins, uh, which is coming up here. Uh, after the weekend of August 5th, 6th. Uh, just a couple other events coming up. We've got Jewel in the Pool right after the pools close uh, for weekday use uh, at Mills Pool on August 7th and August 8th. And then we have a Park Olympics event, uh, which is going to feature local Olympian, oh gosh, I hope I say her name right, Mary Thiessen Lappin. Uh, is going to be part of that Park Olympics event, uh, for which some things are already going on through Outer Spatial. Uh, at Switchyard Park on August 10th, and we may actually have other Olympian involvement. I know it kind of depends on when they come back from the Olympics, and they don't all come back at the same time. Uh, but we do know we'll at least have Mary there and be able to celebrate uh, her accomplishments in making it to the Olympics and being recognized by the community. So just a taste of things to come. And we are hard at work on our budget and our goals for 2025 right now. And we'll be approaching the season where, uh, where those are due and get set for the new year. Thank you, Tim. And I wasn't able to be there for the ribbon cutting of the new Bryan Park playground, but I have seen heavy use, a lot of excitement, especially that climbing thing that has two options there, depending on how adventurous you want to get. Yeah, very popular. So thank you for those updates. Um, and with that, I'll adjourn the July meeting of the Bloomington Board of Park Commissioners.